Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are once again nailing navigation. We are specifically going to look at scroll view today, although you can see that currently I am in page view, but we know we can switch to scroll view by pressing Command E, and that switches us to scroll view. And now, of course, we have the endless scroll of measures from left to right, hence the name scroll view. Now, there's some unique properties about scroll view that I is worth mentioning right off the bat. Um, one is that not everything that you change in scroll view will translate to page view. Some things will, actually a lot of things will. So for example, if I were to drag this uh, piano marking in the violin one part here really close to the staff, um, you'll see that I did that in scroll view, but it will also appear in page view like that. The piano is really close there now. Um, however, other things will not. Um, and specifically, staff spacing is a big one. So I'm in the staff tool here, and we can actually drag these handles a little bit to increase the space. And I'm doing this in scroll view, and you can see I'm making a huge space between flute one and two. However, if we go back to page view, we will see that um, that spacing has not been made in uh, page view. Um, the other things that sometimes don't get translated uh, have to do with the baseline triangles. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about this in some of the tools that actually use these, but not all of these baseline adjustments will um, translate from scroll view to page view, so just be aware of that. Um, I, I say this all just to, so that you're cautious of making too many visual changes in scroll view because a lot of times, the particularly vertical spacing changes in scroll view will not really translate to uh, page view, and page view is really what you're going to see in the printed page. So uh, again, just be careful um, not to do too much visual work in scroll view. This is really more of a tool for composing and orchestrating, I would say. However, we can use some of this to our advantage. In fact, if, if you want to uh, use the staff tool to kind of separate your staffs a little bit more, um, we can do this, and you know you can set this up so that you have a lot of space in between staffs and scroll view, and it will never really affect what's happening in page view. Uh, it just depends on how you want to um, uh, look at your score, and uh, you know you can use that to your advantage. Another thing that's unique in scroll view in Finale, we can actually have uh, globally hidden staffs. And again, this is with the staff tool here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to hide the horn A in one, or horn in A one. There you go. Um, uh, this is the staff attributes. And I'm force hiding the staff for this uh, instrument, and I'm clicking OK, and you'll see this go away in page view. However, in scroll view, that instrument still appears. Here it is, horn and A1. Um, so that's something unique about scroll view is that it will always show hidden instruments no matter what. Again, this is another thing that you can use to your advantage, and I often do this where I'll have a orchestral score and on the very bottom, I'll add a sketch piano part. So if I'm working from uh, a piano part, I can just copy and paste that sketch piano here. And then I can uh, hide that, that uh, sketch piano from uh, page view so that it will never print. But then in scroll view, I can work my way upwards in the score or however I need to uh, with that sketch piano being visible to me in scroll view. So let's talk about uh, navigating around scroll view. Uh, it's fairly simple. Uh, it works sort of the same way as page view with the, uh, the scroll bars in the bottom and, and the right-hand side. Um, the, the little page shuttle that we had in page view now turns into basically a measure number shuttle. And you can see now measure one is here, and that just means that measure one is all the way on the left of the scroll. And uh, with these arrows, we can move measure by measure to scroll through the measures. And we can go the other way. And then the uh, one on the far right will go all the way to the end of the file, and the one on the far left will bring you all the way back to the beginning. And of course, just like page view, we can actually just double click there and enter um, a any measure number there. Press return, and it will take you directly to that measure number. If you happen to know what the measure number is you need, that's how you would do that. Now, th another thing to note about uh, scroll view is that on the top, you'll see this measure number bar. This is actually somewhat of a recent addition to Finale. Um, the number bar here will actually show, uh, can show either defined measure numbers or actual measure numbers. And the difference is, has to do with your measure number region. So in this case, you know, the actual measure number one is the defined measure number one. But we can change the defined measure number one um, in the measure number region, which is uh, lesson way down the road. 
But um, you can start your piece with measure 10, and you'll see that the measure number bar will reflect that as measure 10. That's because this measure number bar is currently showing defined measure numbers. Defined meaning as defined in that uh, measure number region dialog box. However, in the preferences, the finale preferences, under the view section in the middle here, we do have an option for that measure number bar to display defined measures, which is cu uh, currently checked, which is why you're seeing 10 up here, or display actual measures. And if we hit apply, what you'll see now is that the defined measure number 10 here is actually showing measure number one, because essentially this is the actual measure number of the piece. It's the fir very first measure of the piece, so it's showing one. Um, more often than not, you probably want to keep this on defined measure numbers to avoid some confusion, but every so often it's actually helpful to switch to the actual measure numbers if you're doing some complicated uh, work with your measure number regions and you just need a reference point in, in that. But that will make a lot more sense once we uh, s start talking about the uh, measure number region dialog box. Now, just like page view, we can use the home end page up and page down buttons on the uh, on the keyboard, uh, but they work slightly differently. The page up and page down buttons will uh, scroll us up and down uh, as you would expect, and this will probably make more sense if we're zoomed in a lot farther. So we've got three instruments showing there, and now we show the next three, etc. cetera. Uh, that's the page up and page down buttons. The uh, home and end buttons will do sort of what you expect. If you press end, it will take you all the way to the end of the file. If you press home, it will take you all the way back to the beginning of the file. And there's one modifier key available to us, which is the command, and we can use that with page up and page down. And in this case, page down will scroll us to the right uh, one full screen worth of measures. So page up will do the same thing going the other way. So you can kind of see on the right side of my screen, I'm showing part of measure 12 there. If I, if I press command page down, then I'll get all of measure 12 on the left and then 20 is sort of partially shown on the right. Command page down will give me uh, measure 20 on the left. So we can sort of scroll between uh, screenfuls of music with command page up and down. Unfortunately, there is no keystroke that would allow you to move left and right by a single measure. I really wish there was. It would be uh, quite handy. Um, that we can actually, you know, that that's we'd basically be doing this with the uh, arrows in this little shuttle area here. But um, there is no keystroke combination uh, that will that will do that as well, which is unfortunate. And then for me, I think one of the most useful features of scroll view is the uh, what Finale calls staff sets. And uh, currently, I'm going into the view menu, and staff sets is just about in the middle. And you'll notice that I have all staffs showing, but there's all these other uh, select staff sets available that are actually not available because they're grayed out because we haven't programmed anything yet. Um, to program staff sets. Uh, essentially what we're doing is we're creating um, a, s a set of staffs that we can view um, alone. So uh, in order to do this, select the staff tool here and just select uh, any measures that you want. So if I select these first four woodwind measures, and I'm doing that by just uh, sort of lasso selecting, but you can select one at a time and hold down shift, hold down shift to click the handle, etc. cetera. Um, and once we have these four staffs selected, hold down the option key and go back to that view menu where it says staff sets. Now it says program staff set instead of select staff set. Um, we can do this directly with the uh, option control one through eight as well as you can see that keystroke combination there. But in this case, let's just hold down option and press program staff set one. And you'll see that now all the other staffs will go away and I'm just showing those first four uh, woodwind instruments. And now that now we go into the view menu, we can see under staff sets that we have all staffs and select staffs at one, which is checked. So we can go back, check that, and the um, keystroke to switch between them is control zero for all staffs and control one for that new uh, staff set one. So we can go back and forth pretty easily um, just like that. Now we don't have to select concurrent staffs, which I think is part of the real power of this. We can select any staff we want. So if we you know, select the flute one and flute two, and let's say I want to add the horn one and horn two, and maybe the clarinet and A soloist here. Um, so I've got these five set, and I'm gonna hold down option, and I'm press control two. So I've just programmed staff set two, and you'll see that now I have those five instruments uh, skipping the bassoon. And control one would get us back to that staff set one, control zero will get us to all staff sets. 
Now this is really handy because you can do things like, you know, if you want to uh, program a staff set that's all of your bass instruments, you could do that. So you could select like the bassoons and the cello and the double bass here and make a staff set out of that. Um, so it's a really powerful feature uh, that's available in scroll view that I think you should uh, sort of take advantage of. Um, I will say that, <laughs> you know, in Finale, or in, on a Mac, I should say, uh, the staff sets can be selected with the control key and then numbers one through eight. Unfortunately, and I really do say really unfortunately, for Windows, um, you can't, there's no keystroke to select staff sets. Um, so in Windows, you actually do have to go to the menu and choose staff sets and then choose the one that you want. So that is a little bummer, kind of slows you a little bit down in Windows, but um, sorry about that, Windows people. And then finally, I just want to talk a uh, little briefly about uh, Studio View because it is so similar to Scroll View that it's it's uh, hardly worth its own video. So we'll just throw this in here. Um, in Sto Studio View, it's essentially the same as Scroll View, whereas you get this sort of endless scroll of measures left to right. Uh, all of the things apply. Um, everything that applied to Scroll View applies to uh, Studio View pretty much, with a couple exceptions. The major one being that staff sets are not available in Studio View. As you can see, that everything's grayed out here. Um, the other t uh, major exception is that on the top, you have this tempo tap track, which we'll talk about more uh, when we talk about playback and MIDI and all that stuff. But this is actually where you would be able to tap a tempo into the score so that you can get um, uh, a unique tempo track that way. And then obviously, the other major difference is that on the left-hand side, we get these track headers that have playback information, including uh, you know, there's a volume slider here. Uh, there's a pan uh, pot here, and then we have record, uh, which would be used for hyperscribe, solo, and mute buttons here. Now, all of these features in this track head, by the way, um, reflect from the score manager. So if we go into the score manager, you'll see my flute now is showing volume 69 because I changed it in that slider. So if I change it back to 127, you'll see that it gets changed to 127. And this works the other way, too, so if I change it here, Put that at 35, you'll see that the slider will get to 35. So it's really just a reflection of uh, what's happening in the score manager, which is a little easier to access uh, from Studio View. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, there's um, that, That's pretty much Scroll View and uh, Studio View. So um, there you have it. Again, I think the uh, staff sets are really the most important part of Scroll View as far as I'm concerned, but um, uh, you can use that as you want. All right, so thanks for watching. Uh, we've got a couple more videos in the Nailing Navigation. I think we're going to look at uh, Zoom uh, in particular in, in the next video and some other, other tools, so that would be handy. So uh, thanks for watching, and come back, and I'll see you soon.